Okay, so the next step is to set up our 3ds Max Interactive or Stingray project. We provide a number of templates here. Uh, the one that I've used is the HTC Vive for VR and you can hit create, give it a directory, a name and type in a description and that will set up the template for you. So here's one that I've uh, already set up and I'm just going to open that. And what it's going to do is load in the information that I've uh, populated with for in the past and some of the scripts to run uh, VR. And this is the, the, the data set. So it is directly brought across from 3ds Max. And if we look at all the assets and we right click and go and find asset and browser, this is all the data that's come across from Revit. So in an earlier tutorial, I brought everything through as individual uh, assets. So they're by Revit family and they're, they're realized here inside of 3ds Max Interactive. Now again, if you do have a large data set, you might want to not want to do it this way. There may be just too many components. This is just a small house, um, but it just gives me more flexibility inside of uh, Stingray should I need to make some adjustments. However, if you do have a big project, you might want to look at um, a different way of bringing this, this data across. Sometimes you can get too much data. It's a good idea to uh, remove it. So in this instance, I want to delete this asset. I don't need it anymore and it will delete anything that's tied in with it. So um, that's quite a handy thing to do to keep everything sort of cleaned up. So what I have is my 3ds Max scene that uh, I've done a bit more work on here and it is the linked Revit data set. So there's just some missing maps, I'm just going to continue. But what we have here uh, when we look at the reference is my Revit data set connecting into 3ds Max. Now, uh, there's two ways you can do this. So first of all, you need to just connect it to your 3ds Max interactive scene. If you don't have interactive, you can actually click on this and it will take you to the site to get it. What I want to do is either send, level send all, or level send selected. So when you go level send all, it's going to send all the data. Now, if you have a lot of information, this may take a while, and if you tick on Generate UVs for light baking, that can slow it down a little bit as well. Uh, if I just want to show a quick example of this, so if I just go and create, say, a teapot within the space here, and let's bring them up to ground level, um, what I can do is I can go Level Send Selected, and this might be better for managing larger files. So I'll go Level Send Selected, and I will keep on the uh, UV baking. I'm not seeing through any lights or cameras, so I'll just do that and go send and close. Now back in uh, Max Interactive, this has automatically come across and we have it uh, with the default uh, material here inside of, of the scene. It is quite lightweight, so um, let's say we want a more detailed asset to come across and we want to change it. We could change it inside of Interactive, but I prefer to change it inside of 3ds Max. So here we can go to the teapot, we can maybe change the radius to being 100, and we might increase the segments to say 32. And now we have a much uh, smoother teapot. And again, we can just use the same tool to go level send selected, and you'll note that it will um, update existing assets so it remembers that and it's going into the MB folder here. So send and close and then in a second this will compile that data and come through into 3ds Max Interactive. Now you could actually uh, scale the items here as well. You do have rotation tools and scaling tools to manipulate uh, the information should you want to. It just depends on your personal preference and we do have a create tab here to start creating some default objects, some terrain, uh, cameras, and, and lighting. So uh, this, this tutorial was just to show you how to uh, bring that data across. And then uh, you've got access to the materials that might have been used elsewhere in the project. So if we want to cover it with the book materials, we can just drag and drop it onto that asset. Um, or maybe this concrete might look a bit better. And you'll be able to see that. Uh, in real time how it's going to look. 
So uh, that's the quick way to bring the data across. Uh, I'll be doing some more tutorials uh, later to get a bit more advanced. But here we have a Revit data via 3ds Max inside of 3ds Max Interactive. And it's all ready to go in VR. So if we just hit that test level. So this is our result here. And this is just the environment to walk around. Here's our glass teapot, teapot that we just put across. And here's our river data set. And we navigate through this project. There's a few other assets I've added in here. And we can go up uh, to that next level. Some other assets. And some bits and pieces going on here with uh, animated objects and through a few more uh, assets that I've brought across for better, better detail. So uh, that's the, the quick workflow. Um, it doesn't go into a huge amount of detail, but I will be presenting this at uh, Autodesk University 2017 in Vegas, and this will be fully recorded as a 90-minute class. Anyway, I hope that helps you get started with uh, Revit to 3ds Max Interactive, the tools you get inside the AC collections.